Mr. President, I rise today to discuss bipartisan legislation that I'm co-sponsoring with my colleague, Senator Corker. Considering the federal government's recently acquired ownership stake in a number of private companies, I think we all know that taxpayers have been on a roller coaster ride for the past nine months. And from their perspective, each twist and turn has less, left us more deeply invested in troubled markets and oftentimes troubled companies. Americans are concerned about getting their money back and want to keep politics out of how we manage these investments we've had to make over the last few months. So last week, Senator Corker and I introduced S-1280, the TARP Recipient Ownership Trust Act. What will this bill do? It will do three very simple things. First, it will remove politics from the management of our taxpayer investments in private companies. Second, it will ensure that these investments are managed in order to maximize taxpayer returns. And third, it will allow us to plan for removing the government from the private sector by setting a date certain for selling these investments. Now, to achieve these goals, Senator Corker and I are proposing that if the government owns more than 20 percent of a private company, that we place that ownership stake in an independent trust. This trust would run, would be run with a fiduciary duty for taxpayers by three directors, three independent directors appointed by the President. These directors would agree to perform this work for free as a service to the country. And in doing so, will give the American taxpayers what they deserve, the upside on the massive investments they have provided over the past nine months. And the trust, the trust so this wouldn't be an open-ended ownership in these companies, the trust would have to sell all of these assets by the end of 2011, although they could ask for a brief extension if it was, again, in the interest of the taxpayer's return. In this way, taxpayers can know we won't own stock in these companies for the next 20 years. In practice, this means that taxpayer ownership of AIG, Citigroup, and General Motors would be managed in order to maximize the return on these taxpayer investments. Now, Mr. President, we've all seen how political and contentious, and contentious the TARP program, TARP program has become. Now, I know back when we voted on this matter earlier in this year how controversial it was. I still think it was unfortunately that we got into this circumstance, but fortunately the right thing to do. And while there is a lot of challenges about how we got into this program, if we did look around, and actually Stephen Perlstein in the Washington Post put it out in an article recently, if nine months ago, if six months ago, or even three months ago, back at the middle of March when the stock market was at its all-time low in terms of reacting to this crisis, if any economist would have said by the end of June, by the end of June, would you be willing to look at a circumstance where the market was up 25, 30 percent, although it was a bit down today, if many of the banks that we'd invested in TARP funds were actually trying to repay those TARP funds, and if we'd seen the housing market, at least in many communities, start to stabilize, would we view that as a good outcome? Well, that's basically where we're at. And while we've got enormous problems, we are seeing some progress. But, however, one needs only to look at the number of TARP-related amendments that have been filed in the Senate just in this past month. As a matter of fact, the Leader was speaking earlier today about the number of TARP amendments that could potentially be on the travel bill that you have up, Mr. President, to know that this program is becoming a lightning rod. And some of the reasons for this concern are, are, truly, are truly relevant, and they are because the American people don't know when and how the TARP program is supposed to end. And the American people, unfortunately, who invested in individual companies, some of the companies that now we've invested in, don't know how much we as the public will get back or whether we as the public investment will politically interfere with the management of these companies. That's, again, why we need to take and implement this legislation that Senator Corker and I have laid out that will put these ownership shares in this independent fiduciary trust. Now, I don't support cutting off the TARP program right now or limiting the tools it currently provides the administration, including the limited reuse of money that is repaid to the government. TARP already has a sunset date, 
after which more funds cannot be spent. And since our not markets are not back to normal, even though there is improvement, we shouldn't prevent the use of the tools we currently have. But we do need to set parameters for managing our investments and winding them down in order to take the politics out of this program. American taxpayers deserve to have their investments managed in order to maximize their returns. That's what the trust will do, and I hope we will consider using this model for other investments as well. This trust will also help us take some of the politics out of the TARP program, and that's why I'm proud that this legislation is bipartisan and led by my friend from Tennessee, Senator Corker. I hope my colleagues will join in supporting this bipartisan legislation, S-1280, the TARP Recipient Ownership Trust Act. And while this measure won't resolve all our concerns surrounding TARP, I hope it can serve as a model to maximize the taxpayer returns on these, this investment. Let me also take one additional moment, Mr. President, and also indicate another investment-related matter. Uh, under the leadership of Senator Jack Reed from Rhode Island, when the initial investments and the initial TARP plan was put together, Senator Reed, I think, appropriately said, if we invest in banks, in addition to getting a traditional return, we, the public, for taking these risks, ought to receive some upside potential in terms of warrants. Well, luckily, the Congress went along with that, and we did receive warrants from a number of the banks that we invested in. I personally am very happy to see that a number of these banks are starting to repay repay the, the investments the public made. However, there remains a question. What are we going to do with the warrants? Senator Reid and I have asked Secretary Geithner a number of times that we hope that we, he would also consider placing these warrants in some type of independent trust as well, so that again, we the taxpayers can receive the upside of these investments. We took the risk, risks with these banks during these troubled times. I'm happy to see these banks return these funds. However, for the banks to buy back these or sell back these warrants at what I believe today is still a discounted price would not allow we, the taxpayers, to maximize our investments. So again, I hope Secretary Geithner responds to the request that Senator Reid and I have made in making sure that these warrants are uh, appropriately put in the type, same type of independent fiduciary trust that I'm proposing that the private investments that we've made under the TARP also get put into.